Okay. Good stuff. Well, let's get let's talk a little sports betting. Let's look at some early odds here for the Mayakoba Golf Classic from El Camillion. Uh, outrights are out right now as we're recording this. Top 20s, I got a few of those. Uh, where are you going to start, Pat? Where are you going to start the uh, – your? Wh- wh- who's the shortest number that you're looking at? I bet I know. Well, I think that um, I like Abraham Answer at 22-1. Yeah. to one. That's where yep. he is on um, – he is on uh, – he's actually 18-1 to 1 on points bet, but he's 22-1 to 1 on the DraftKings Sportsbook. I think that makes a lot of sense there. Um, we didn't mention him on the pod, but a guy that's just been playing absolute fantastic golf, if you want to play a shorter odds guy, I like, you know, getting Daniel Berger also at 22-1. to 1. Um, Haven't seen him lately, didn't get to play in the Masters, but I still think that's a pretty good number for him. Uh, and then also up there, I would say Victor Hovland uh, at 25. So those are the three – in the shortest odds area that I really like. I like the Abe call. I mean, that's as short as I'd go at 22 to one, obviously this being a course rewarding accuracy and putting Abe answer. He's Mexican. He's accurate. And the boy can putt, you know, it's the trifecta for El Chameleon. So if he had a huge dong like course designer, Greg Norman, that would be the fourth, that would be the fourth part of the not trifecta. Cause that would be, I don't know. Uh, anyway, Abe answer twenty two to one. Connors and Neiman, two names I mentioned in DFS, are both thirty five to one. I, the win equity alone, I mean, Abe answer's not won a PJ Tour event before. You know, it, Connors and Neiman have, and so you give me guys that are deadly ball strikers. Um, neither one of them probably as good a putters as as good a putter as Abe answer, but as good a ball striker, and have actually won golf tournaments on the PJ tour Connors and Neiman, I think are interesting and both arrive in equally great form. I mean, Connors probably the best, but Neiman in good form as well. And then kind of in that mid range, there's a lot of names here that kind of get my attention. You mentioned him on the, on the DFS side, Mark Leishman at 55 to one. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I'll end up actually pulling the trigger on leash just because I mean, yes, it was encouraging to see him play better at Augusta, but Augusta is a place that rewards familiarity and, and, and history, which Leishman has a lot of, and he's always played it well. And sometimes that can mask poor form, um, which he has been in poor form prior to that. So I don't know that I don't know that I necessarily see him jumping up and winning this golf tournament after that, but 55 to one in a week, you know, if I'd have told you in the spring, Mark Leishman is going to be 55 to one to win the OHL or, or not the OHL, the Mayakoba. That's a big number for a name like that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, a couple names in that range as well. These are better values on points bet, which if you sign up for points bet, if they're legal in your state, you can check that out. Go to pointsbet.com. Uh, use promo code TJ250. Get a deposit bonus there. Um, but Harmon who we did not talk about in DFS and then Joel Damon, who we talked about both at 60 to one, you know, Harmon pretty poor record here, but in great form and should play well here. You know, he's an accurate player. He's a great putter. There's no reason he should not play well here. I I see him as a guy who could go from poor course record here, course history to winning. Um, So 60 to one, I like that. And then Joel, we we talked about him earlier, uh, you know, not maybe not as a ton of win equity with Joel because he, he can't seem to close the door on one or even find himself late on a Sunday lately, but it's a weak field. It suits his game. He doesn't have to overpower the golf course. I don't mind the number. What are some intermediate kind of numbers there you like? So I had, um, I had Joel written down. I had Leishman written down. I think Grillo at 50 to one is another guy in that range. That's, that's also a pretty good, um, pretty good bet this week. Um, you know, I like, you know, Sebastian Munoz, a, a guy that I've been on. I just can't, you know, I don't necessarily know if I, I like him a ton in, in DFS from an ownership standpoint. We'll see where he is, but um, he's just been in great form. He's at 66 to one in that range. I think that's pretty good for him. I, you know, we talked about Keegan, you know, he's at 70 to one. I think those are, are pretty good numbers there. Um, Adam Long, 
if we're getting into that 100, and he's 70 to one, if we're getting into that 100 to one range, and then we can talk more long shots, you know, a guy like Denny McCarthy coming off of a miss mm-hmm. cut of the RSM, and you're getting him at 100 yeah. to one. I mean, I think that's a really good number there. <clears throat> Another for, accurate for, player with a great flat stick. Yeah. So I like him as well. And then I, you know, I'll let you start if we, as we get into the, you know, we're in long shot season here. So, well, there's a couple more. I mean, I like Kazire at 70 to one, former winner here, great putter, great form. I like Piercy at 80 to one, um, great record here, great form, ball striker, just, you know, he, he, it all is going to come down to the putter for him. Um, I had McCarthy written down, love that play. Um, I, I like Doug Gim about 125 to one. Like, yeah. Again, a young a young guy that needs to jump up the next status level on the tour. This is his last shot at doing so. He's getting limited starts. He's in here because of a withdrawal. He was an alternate, so I mean, he has to take advantage of his spots, and he's been doing that in the fall. And he's got the game. So, Doug Gim at 125 to one is interesting. Then I get into some real bombs here um, <clears throat> on points bet. JJ Spawn is 250 to one. You know, JJ, known ball striker, decent form. Um, he was one that a couple years ago, coming off the web.com, we all thought was going to be a, a staple on the tour. Ball striking is just so, so good. So he seemed to have found a little something here lately at 250. I think that's a good number. And then I talked about him in DFS. I like him a lot. But Wesley Bryan at 300 to one is a big, big, big number. For a PGA Tour winner at Harbor Town, <clears throat> another short course that rewards accuracy and putting. He's been here since Sunday. Been been in Mexico since Sunday, grinding it out. Also on limited starts with a major medical. Love him at three hundred to one. I think that's a big number for him. If you can find an each way number on him, like a five way or eight way each way, I think that'd be great. Um, and then a name you mentioned in DFS, but I just see on the betting board and think, okay. Well, this guy's won on the PJ Tour in the last year, too, uh, and he almost won a couple weeks back. Ryan Armour at 300 to 1. Short knocking, accurate, bald headed Ryan Armour. But damn, if he doesn't find a, find a Sunday late charge like once a year, and this could be the, the type of course that happens. So 300 to 1, I think, is a big number for him. If I'm looking at super bombs, I do have a few top 20s. Do you have any more bets? No, that's pretty much it. I was with you on Doug Yim at 125 to one. I, you know, I think you know Camilo Vajegas at 175 to one could be an interesting play. I mean, it's it's a, obviously you're not going to put a ton of units on him, but he played well at the RSM. I talked yeah. him up at the Bermuda, and you hated or I can't remember if that was in the chat or what on the Nut Hut chat, but um, he didn't he did make the cut, but he didn't. I think you're making this up. But he played well at Darson, so there you go. Uh, a few okay. top 20s. Um, Wesley Bryan, who I just mentioned, is 8-1 to one as a top 20. Really like that. Uh, J.J. Spawn, who I mentioned, 7.5-1. to one. Love both of those. Uh, Henrik Norlander. We've not talked about Henrik. He's 5-1 to one for a now, top 20. This is 20. his first event since COVID, right? This is his first event back since COVID. He, he got tossed out of the RSM. Tremendous ball striker. It's just all about the flat stick for him. So it does his his winning upside. I don't really think is there like it would have been at maybe the RSM. He's more comfortable on on Bermuda surfaces, but um, you know I think the putter may hold him back from winning. But I do like the I, I do like the top twenty number at five to one. Doug Gim is four and a half to one as a top twenty, and Denny McCarthy is three and a half to one in a top twenty. So if you're a little more conservative in terms of your bets and you like to play it a little safer, you know, risk a, you know, risk a half a unit, you know, on some top twenties, you know, you want to do that. I, I think McCarthy, Gim, Norlander, uh, those are some good kind of mid range top 20 numbers I think are interesting, but actually my favorite one, I mean, I think the best values are Brian and spawn at, uh, yeah, at eight to one, seven and a half to one. I think those are pretty good. So, okay. 